This is a demo of the supplementary electromagnetic emission PDUs. We have a mission running remotely consisting of an S-22 and an A-10 and several other aircraft. From the A-10's point of view, we can observe the electromagnetic environment using this generic uh, receiver and oscilloscope. And we will also see the S-22 and uh, beams displayed in the Versig image generator. And over here, we will be able to see how the data is populated uh, in the simulation from DIS. Currently, the only information coming, coming into the simulation is from DIS and it's using the base electromagnetic emission PDU. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll zoom out a little bit and see the basic environment. I'm going to keep it at north up and I'm going to enable the uh, beams so we can see the beams. Ooh, there's a lot of space. All right, so we're seeing the environment right there, and you can see there's several beams there, but they're not very well defined. That's because the electromagnetic emission PDU doesn't really show us much of anything. Um, the S22 has two radars one is a uh, tracking radar, and the other is an acquisition radar. And uh, we see that there are three beams on. There are two um, tracking radar beams and one acquisition beam. And the data that we've gotten from the electromagnetic emission PDU is uh, really pretty basic in, in uh, nature. It shows a, a few, a little bit of the data about the emitter. We have uh, we have the power. Uh, we have whether it's on or off. Um, we can look at the pulse data. The pulse data, it really only gives you uh, uh, one PRI and uh, frequency and pulse width, uh, which uh, works pretty well. But um, when we get to the beam shape and the scan pattern, there really is almost no information about any of that in the standard PDU. So uh, what I'll do is I'll start making changes via letting in different messages here, the scan pattern, PDU, the pulse table PDU, the beam PDU, and finally um, the uh, fine grain scan control PDU. Uh, so I will select, right now we will see, and here uh, the ordinary uh, acquisition signal. And the first thing I'll do is I'll turn on the scan pattern. And the scan pattern message will take a few seconds to propagate. And so now we see that the scan pattern is going, but it doesn't do you a whole lot of good unless you actually have beam information from somewhere. So I'm going to enable the beam information as well. And now we can see what the beams look like and uh, what they're actually doing. So we have some pretty good information right here. We see what's going on in the scenario. And you can see the orange beam here is the, um, the acquisition beam. And from a top-down perspective, you can see that there is a, uh, on the target tracker, there is a um, tracking beam, which is actually tracking three targets, which we can see here. There are three targets, this one, this one, and this one. And um, during that time, also, there is a, uh, uh, another uh, acquisition or, or uh, acquisition beam that is working on that same radar to search for new targets in the same space uh, 90 degrees in this area and we're hearing the audio and seeing the signal uh, from the A10's perspective so every once in a while uh, the target um, uh, radar will come through actually that's over here and we're seeing the target radar and also it's uh, different acquisition radar. Okay, so uh, just by enabling the beam and uh, scan pattern, we've gotten quite a lot, but we can use even more. We can get more detail. If we look at the what's actually going on with the pulses, you can see that pulse data, but we can go ahead and update our pulse data. And you can actually see that there is more legs to it. Uh, we have multiple um, 
PRFs and multiple frequencies that we can see and this is a compressed pulse where we can see parts of the pulse. This is a representation of the pulse right here. We can see that the uh, parts of the pulse um, have different frequencies uh, going from low to high as in pulse compression. And so that adds another dimension to the quality of the simulation. And uh, the other thing we can do is we can actually uh, enable the scan control. And with the scan control enabled, right, now we can actually see that uh, what's really intended is that the target tracking beam and the search beam uh, are really are not running at the same time, they're running alternately. So it goes through three tracking, tracks three targets, including this one, and then goes back and does a search. So you see the search, search right there, search, track, search, track, track, search. So it's alternating targets and uh, going through its list of targets. So this can also be modified in runtime, and we can see what's happening a little bit better here. So we see these are all uh, pretty much electronic scans, and how the uh, the beam and the scans uh, are really all interacting with each other uh, uh, to produce a better simulation.